and and now now the last the last conversation for uh today is we're not gonna do card by card because we'll do that later it's more i want to talk about red white and lore hold because of course i do i uh, of course you do yeah <laughs> well this is fascinating right because i wouldn't have thought myself a red white player a, six months ago i love red i love white i mean jess guy classically is probably one of the color combos i love the most and part of it i think is just because like every representation of red white we've gotten in magic up to this point has been lame and by lame i mean like they're soldiers. They like attacking. We're just warriors that do attacking. We're the Spartans on Theros, or we're the Boros. So we're like cops, but also soldiers. Even like on in in cons, which probably has some of the cooler red white versions. Like they were the attacky parts of Jeskai and uh, Mardu, so they weren't even like exciting there. So yes, uh, the fact that Lorehold is is looking at red white and is exploring a different part of what they could be together than. I am a soldier and I'm going to attack you is like, thank God. Finally love it. Uh, you're all the best. I do think it like Gavin retweeted a post from two years ago where he was like, we've heard recently that you guys are unhappy with red, white play style, especially like in, in formats like commander, what could be done differently or what type of effects would you like to see? And recently today or yesterday, he said, or a week ago for all of you people listening to this, he basically was like threads like this or what affect this. And the fact that they're like, like the legendary creatures that were spoiled yesterday, there's one that's like gives everything undying and makes things spirits. There's the one that like makes artifact tokens out of things in your graveyard. There's the reanimator one. There's Plark, who is a looting red white commander. The fact that the backside has something to do with untapping and tapping creatures you control is gravy. But the fact that there's a looting red white one means that my Nahiri Planeswalker uh, rule zero breaking commander deck can now just be a Plark deck. I can just play reanimator red white in commander and that's dope. And that card's fire outside of that because two mana looting that like has good end on the backside like that has modern considerations but long story short this sets yeah. fire <laughs> i'm so excited it's really cool design and i think that when they both did i think both the design of the abilities themselves but then also when they kind of discuss internally like because the thing you said last week on the show that really stood out to me alex was that like if you just don't have an affection for soldiers or the military if that's just not something that you really connect to it makes a lot of the Boros stuff that we've seen over the years just really unappealing. And there is this aspect of flavor in Magic. It's not, it's not the part of the game I focus on the most, but there is the idea that when you're investing time or energy as a newer player or even just a player who's trying to expand, like I understand so much more now why flavor and feel matters so much to Magic players because so many players play Commander and so much of the idea behind Commander is the flavor and the feel to your deck. The cards that you include, the Commander you use, the cards that you use to supplement the Commander, the way you want the deck to feel as you're playing it. If you're not a story person, if you're not a flavor person, it doesn't really... It's almost impossible to ignore, I guess, is the point. You get mm -hmm. so familiar with these legendary creatures, you get so familiar with that stuff that I really do think that when they explore this stuff, and they figure out that Lorehold is going to be red, white, and it's going to be like elephants that explore and are Indiana Jonesy. Like that is cool in a way that like stand up and salute isn't cool to everybody. It is cool to some people, sure. but that's what it's been for a long time. And it's also it's also play variety, right? Like if you're into red, white color combos and you like lightning bolt because like red, white can be control colors. There's a reason Jeskai is one of the classic control color combos is because red and white have two of the best removal suites in the game. And like like attacking with creatures and, and like the play pattern of being aggressive doesn't necessarily lean itself towards that. And so this gives, you know, it, it really shows that you can be a prison deck. You can be, there's like so many different things you can do with the color combo that other colors, especially the allied colors, have had so many opportunities to explore different ways. Like if you don't like the Azorius, you could pick a bunch of different other factions. You can pick the Ojatai, which, or you can pick uh, whatever the blue white faction was back when Stronghold was around. You can pick Bant and or Esper. You can pick like there's a bunch of different options. And even in those like red white Naya, like Naya is attack is about attacking, <laughs> right? <laughs> so like, it's cool that that like you're getting this opportunity to just like play in a cool new space. And and that's what I've kind of liked about all of these groups is they're all so far it looks like they're all going to attempt to do something different than what we've seen now now blue green is maybe quantix or whatever is looking to be most similar to simic in the sense that they're both like science focused now this one seems 
and we haven't so at this point uh, we record these on tuesday nights uh we've gone through all of the lore hold day like they're like theming each day on card releases we've done most of the lore hold cards and a lot of the prismari cards have been previewed and so we kind of know what they're about but now i believe every elder dragon has been printed previewed we have not seen the green black elder dragon yet okay so we've seen silver quill which has like a politics theme we've seen quandrix tanazir quandrix which has the like when it enters the battlefield double like it's about counting it doubles the plus one plus one counters on a creature and then it makes all base power four or it makes base power equal to tanazir's power math is involved <laughs> we've seen that what we've seen that we've seen the prismari one right that creates a treasure and then your artifacts all get you can tap to create mana to cast spells is that the deal correct is that how it works yep 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 so, so you get a treasure four, that you can use four. and then the the lore hold one is a five five for seven vigilance haste whenever it attacks look at the top seven cards of your library you may cast instant or sorcery spells with mana value less than or equal to its power I'm paying their casting cost yeah 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 so so you can like Powerful. Yeah, so it, it's a seven drop. It's very expensive, but people are already talking about cool things you can do with it as a reanimator target or just like once it's in play as a control finisher, it's very powerful. Yeah, there's just insane. Like we're going to like I, I, my brain hasn't even been able to wrap around like we'll, we'll do our modern review and we'll do our like top 10 cards thing that we've been doing. But there's just so many cool cards and like just different design spaces they've been playing it. The fact that the Prismari about like are building these big spells that do different stuff. And that even black green has like a, a like incremental life changes seems to be the theme so far. Once again, we're in the world of recording things a week ahead of time in the middle of literally every hour a new preview card comes out. So we'll find out more and you may even know more than we do. Right. You definitely know more than we do right <laughs> now. What what's going on? But yeah, I think I just like it's cool that they're playing in new spaces and they're taking this opportunity to say, hey, we have the guilds for people that are in the guilds you, that relate to them. Great. But there is definitely personality types that don't fit in Ravnica or there's red white fans that don't fit in Boros or there's black green fans that don't fit into the graveyard themes of the Golgari. Here's a different option. You don't want to be like a weird banker in, in black white. You want to be like Stylin though. Here's a different option. You're not <laughs> in the science. Here's artwork, right? There, so I think it's cool to see just different, different versions of stuff. Do you feel like going into another multicolor set like this that the design space for magic is still sort of endless. Like, is there, do you, do you look at it and just go like, I feel like we have scratched 10% of the surface of what's going to be able to be done with this game because the understanding, the loyalty by the, the player base is so strong because this is like the ninth or 10th, like multicolor heavy set now. Right. Like they've done it. Oh, ton. set ever. Yeah. So there's three Ravnica's blocks, shards block, Con invasion block, block, invasion block, legends. There's like con yeah, there's cons you mentioned. There's like um, what's it called? Uh, uh, Icoria is like pretty multicolor heavy. Icoria, it's all like Ico Icoria, Icoria, and and the pirate world are less that I think there are multicolored things there, but it's not as much of a theme. Icoria a little bit because I mean, they have there's like ten multicolor companions, and there was like. The cycle of dragons and but that's it. not dragons, right? There's like 10 companions. There's five mythic legendaries. And then there's like an uncommon cycle, like the normal uncommon cycle that most sets have. OK, got it. So it's not like a full set. I guess that's like, fair because like every set now it was actually this is something that's interesting and I recommend it. Mark Rosewater released. Uh, he does his uh, nuts and bolts article once a year, which like goes over a different way of designing stuff. And he did a new version of the skeleton uh, breakdown which the skeleton is their design document that they like have filled out and it like it's fascinating how almost already planned a set is from like basic effects especially like the limited stuff where it's like you have a, a common that draws you a card you uh, in blue you have exactly these five uncommons you have exactly these 10 commons these commons need to have this you have to have one with vigilance one with tramp like they have it all laid out and one thing they have is every single set starts with a cycle of 10 uncommon gold cards, no matter what. And they're meant to be signifiers on what the limited environment is supposed to like. If you were to draft this card, you will are supposed to do this when you're playing limited. And sometimes they get rid of them. For instance, I would be surprised if in this set they have that. Uh, you're supposed to draft the, the different colleges. You're not supposed to draft the allied color combo. So there's not going to be like a blue white uncommon one. This set comes limited. There's going to be 
10 archetypes to draft, but those archetypes are going to be the five colleges and then the five combos of colleges. Oh, you'll have all the enemy wedges, right? You'll have Mardu, you'll have, because you'll start pack one drafting one, and then you'll see what pack two gives you. And often it'll be not the color that you were maybe in and a different color that's available. So like you'll either end up in I'm I'm Lorehold or you'll be like, oh, I'm Lorehold and Silver Quill. I'll get all those cards because there's enough fixing for it. Or I'll do I'm Quantrix, but I'm Quantrix and so, so I'm going to need to get these names right. Prismari. Yeah, Prismari, Silver Quill. You got the uh, Bloom Shadow. Blue, Wither Bloom? Wither Bloom? Does that sound right? Yeah. It's Prismari, Quandrix, Lorehold, uh, Wither Bloom, and Silver Quill. Just to go back to the question that I asked you initially, um, it sounds like there's less of these sets than I thought. But even so, do you still just see the design of magic as kind of just being somewhat endless? Do you just still feel like there's so much complexity to the game, so much ability to customize it that you could see 20 more years of just like no hiccups? Well, that I think that's the thing that they're doing differently now, right? They've found design space. They're they're breaking the rules to create more design space. I, I think they're they've been good at limiting stuff. And obviously, as we're seeing with red white or white in general as a color combo, where they're going to expand upon what's viable. Red white has been so pigeonholed for so long that they've realized, oh. Artifacts matter, and red-white makes a ton of sense. Graveyard reanimator because of the discard element of red and rebuying spells in red, and then white has the ability to reanimate, is the second best after black at it. That's a whole area to play in. The ability to protect things that are different. You have, you know, yeah, I think I think there's just like more spaces that these cards can obviously play in that wizards, and then that's probably true of all of them. There's even probably stuff that like even Wither Bloom and Golgari. If we go to another plane where black green is a focus, you can focus on death touch or minus minus one, minus one. I mean, like black green in on scars of Mirrodin was about infect, right? Like there's there's different features to magic that you can focus on and explore. But like then you have stuff like learn, right? Like they're like in companion. A companion is another one, right? Where they're they've like decided that the sideboard is an important resource that they weren't using enough. And it's going to be at continuously at odds with Commander. It's one of the more fascinating issues you're facing and is probably the biggest thing between Commander and Arena, right? Do you know this issue? No. So in Commander, you don't have a wish board. You can't... Wish cards aren't legal. There's no such thing as a sideboard oh, or a wish board. Sure. And Wizards is designing cards now for best of one. And in a lot of ways, this is good for commanders. You're getting a lot of cards that are situationally better, but then have backup plans of being generically good, like a braid or split cards from Ravnica that are built for being able to be versatile. But on the other hand, it also means that they're starting to use the wishboard. It's why Karn used it. Vivian used it. You had the black these new, yeah, tutor. These new, these new lesson, these new lesson cards. And right? now, these are, these are... Yeah, now lessons and learn where if you cast a learn spell, you can get you can either loot, you can discard a card or draw a card, um, which some of these cards will be amazing. That's a whole other issue. Or you can get a lesson card from your sideboard. And that's the thing that just doesn't work in command commander. But in best of one, it uses a resource that you have for your deck. And it also is just the thing that works in constructed. So it's definitely a line. It's a resource that wizards feels like they plan on actively using more often moving forward. That's going to continuously be at odds with the commander community. And it's going to be interesting where that ends up do you think it's a good thing like why do you think they're leaning into it more i i think if commander wasn't in contention yes i think it's a good thing i, th I think like it's a cool way to use a sideboard wish cards are dope they're using them in more interesting ways like the lesson learned thing where it's a specific list of cards you can get there companion was really cool if though broken even karin is cool outside of the fact that it comboed with M micos and Flatus. it just continues to allow for new interesting design space and allows for less shuffling i think the one of the reasons they love it is wizards already disliked tutors from a loading screen perspective and these are effects that let you not have to have a loading screen it's like one of the reasons i'm surprised we haven't gotten land tokens which we have right that's what treasures basically are <laughs> in many ways so i think it's just a, a, a different place to design from they're obviously printing cool stuff into it i think that the issue is that is there eventually enough times where wizards heavily leans into the wish board mechanical space as a key part of magic design where Commander needs to change to allow it in some way. 
Well, I mean, think about the number of commander cards that get designed in a commander set that reference like multiple players, like, you know, those are the dual lands that only come into play untapped. If you have two or more opponents, like the number of cards that are designed to accommodate commander players and the commander sphere that are irrelevant in, in 1v1 play that have that are bad cards. Uh, you think about the cards that were designed for Battle Bond, you know, like some of these like as you draft it types of cards, like they, they're allowed to design cards that reference a specific space that other formats don't really include. Sure. And sometimes there's crossover. Some of those great commander cards are awesome for 1v1. They're really fun cards. I like Council's Judgment is a card that was designed with a specific purpose and has ended up being a really fun card to be able to play in 1v1 with a really unique effect because it doesn't target. And, and on I the think, other hand, stuff like True Name Nemesis that was designed to be fair in multiplayer is like toxic towards 1v1. Yeah, that's fair. So I just think that I think 1% of the time it's okay when everything doesn't play well together. I think that they can't continue to design different play experiences for different players if they're not willing to at least throw the baby out of the bathwater 1% of the time. Absolutely. I think I agree with that in general. And I, I, I think that's just like the actual answer. Right? I think you're just actively correct. It's just with Learn and Companion, it shows that Wizards... And every other set is now using wish bards to some extent. It shows that Wizards is going to keep hitting that vein. I think that vein's very deep. And the question to me is not necessarily should Wizards do that? Because I think Wizards should do it. Uh, the question to me is more should Commander just allow it, right? Because it's a rule in Commander that you don't have a wish board. Can you just have a wish board? Is that just a thing you should be able to have? I mean, and then it references cards that are only you know wishable if you're using wish cards like what is it then it's like a side it's just an extra set of cards that you have that can be like you have a 10, hundred you have a 10, 10 card wish board you're allowed to have one like yes it's a weird s s issue like it, it's clunky and this is why it's not legal right it's not legal because it's clunky but on the other hand if i had to choose from a time saving perspective in CDH, where like I care about people shuffling and being done shuffling before I move my take my next action versus regular commander where I just ignore it. Demonic Tutor is worse than a wish from a play experience. I think that what I would do if I was designing this rule, it would be you have a wish board of up to nine cards. And the reason being, I think that a 90 card deck functionally is not so different from a 100 card deck. It's especially in a multiplayer game where like I mean, yeah, you can make your deck smaller and have a... I don't think you take your deck down for a wish board. I think you have a 99 card deck commander plus a whatever number wish board. And maybe it's five. Maybe it's like way less. No, I, would, I mean, I, I would be okay if you wanted to have... or So maybe it's four. Maybe it's not nine. Maybe it's four. So maybe that means that... I just don't think that going beyond 100 cards is something that is like a necessary thing to do at all in Magic. It's already so many cards in a deck. It's already such a thick stack. I just don't think that well, going wish up to 105... Not in your deck, right? It's your sideboard. It's a separate pile of cards. You're not shuffling it in. No, no I mean, I understand that. I'm just, like just, I'm just saying that box. I, I think adding a... Yeah, adding a wish board so that you now have 105 or 110 cards doesn't feel necessary. I think it would be that if you want to play with... You can play up to four. So that way you have your, your 100th card as your commander up to four you're still playing a 95 card deck as opposed to a 99 card deck which is like negligible and like almost makes no difference so you would that you, to me you would lower your deck size to to make room for the for the wish board i'm not i don't think i've actually heard anyone propose that idea i wonder if you had a sink what if you played one wish what if the whole idea is that in your deck karn can get you one you have karn in your deck it's a good card and karn can get you a wish card so you're now you're now your 98th, your 99th card instead of your 100th card isn't in your deck because you already start with 99 cards. Your commander's already off to the side. Doesn't really make that much like, of a difference. I like that less. I think you want multiple options there other than what's I'm, the I'm point. Saying, well, you, I'm, I'm saying you could have up to four. Oh, so if you oh, wanted oh. to just do one, you could have one. But if you want to have four, you could well, have then, four. I don't care if you're playing 95 cards or 99 cards. It doesn't really make a difference to me. Then shouldn't, from a strategic perspective, shouldn't every single deck just be a 95 card deck? Even if you're not playing a wish card, shouldn't you just put four cards in your wish board? Just heighten your odds of drawing good cards? No, because you have, if I have wish cards in my sideboard and I have four of them and you have none, I get the advantage of having certain cards in my deck that can reference my wish board, which probably everybody would do because it would be an inherent advantage. But if not, if I don't feel like doing that, I have access to more awesome cards in my deck that in theory can be tutored with all my tutors I'm playing. Well, but like if in limited or in standard or in modern, in modern, if you could play with a 56 card deck versus a 60 card deck, would you choose to do so? 
Well, certainly, but that's also 1v1 with multiple copies of cards. So the math is totally different. I think that if you're talking about the difference between 56 and 60, first of all, from a likelihood of drawing a card perspective, when you have mul- when you have up to four copies in a 56 versus one copy in a 95, the likelihood of drawing the same card twice is so low when you're talking 95, 96 out of 100 compared to okay, but then 21 limited, unique in limited, in limited. How often do you play 42 cards in your lifetime? How many times have you played 42 cards outside of conspiracy or mill heavy formats, I guess, which you're just mill contingency outside of like weird. Yeah, no, I, I yeah, get yeah. you. But I, why, why are we talking? But why does limited have anything to do with it? Well, because well, I mean, it's, you would... it's one card, right? It, it, like you're the, the power level of your cards is, is varied. You're it's not multiple cards in the format. My point is. Not every player is like this. And Commander is a casual format. So people aren't going to be trying to min-max at every level. And in fact, the format is being distinguished as the format to not min-max in. Right. Mind you, on the other hand, the CDH community exists. And that is all about min-maxing. And I think every single CDH player would choose to have five cards on their sideboard no matter what. Even if they don't have a single wish board. They might play with wish cards. But I think they would choose to put five cards on their wish board to have a 95 card deck every single time. I think you're probably right. And I would be okay with that. Makes yeah, no difference okay. to me. All right. I, I mean, if that's right, like do you say that now, we said we said that for a long time with companions and, and until they changed the rules, it was kind of that way. It sure. was like people did just start playing with a companion in every single deck. You were at a disadvantage if you weren't. Not um, in, I think not probably commander, that's though. what, yeah, when they changed the rule, it got a little different. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. Yeah, I think I think there's a level of how do you do wish boards i think what wizards did with learn is actually the perfect solution they gave use case options that didn't involve wishing and technically they've done that for a lot of the other cards karn always has his other abilities in fact i've played karn in commander not having a wish board the black demonic tutor that wished did that fairy fey of wishes you could just play it as a fairy you didn't have to go there karn i think also got stuff out of exile and learn lets you rummage right you discard a card to draw a card which is an like a very powerful effect and sometimes going to be better than tutoring so I think that there being a fail case option is probably just going to be the answer. And even the companions, right? All, everyone but Lutri, you could just play as a companion commander. You don't have to play with them in the command zone. I, I think I think the other thing with wishboards, and this is something that I said on Twitter, is you know what's fun about wishboards? They're the best rule zero conversation you can have. Because I can walk up because. To, to a table and say, hi. I am playing this deck. I have a lot of learn cards. I have a learn wish board. Is it okay if I play with wish my wish board? And if the your opponent or I'm playing Burning Wish and or Karn and or the Eldrazi that gets all of the Eldrazi out of your wish board, which is yeah, probably yeah, the yeah, scariest yeah. version of a wish card. And your Spawn opponent Sire of Ulamog, is that the card yeah, you're referring exactly. to? Exactly. And your opponent can be like, No, uh, I don't want you to do a wish card board. And you can be like <laughs> well, luckily, I have uh, all of these wish cards and then a sideboard of cards that I can switch in and out that were going to be the cards I was going to wish for. <laughs> right. Like it's it's not like the Nahiri problem where I would sit at a table with my Nahiri deck where a Planeswalker is the commander. But like, hey, I would like to play with this deck where the Planeswalker is a commander. And if they're like, no, that's not the rules, which has happened to me, which is fine. And it is their right to say. Now my deck works worse, right? My deck no longer works. It's built over the fact that I have a looting ability as my commander. That's true with Chandra Tribal as well, right? It's just not going to be as good as having Chandra in the command zone. Tamiyo, I switch in for Tatiova and it's worse for my opponent. You should have let me have Tamiyo. That, that is the least, least powerful option <laughs> of the commanders that deck could run. But with, with Whipboard, you just side in those wishes into your deck and take your wish cards out. Put Microsynthlatus in and take Karn out, or put whatever other artifact you might have and put take Karn out. So yeah, that's that's a that's a that's an inch, that's a fair point. It's that's a sideboard. It's already a sideboard for you. Sideboard those wishes out. <laughs> and I think that's always kind of the point. Use your use your communication ability. But yeah, I'm super stoked on the design of this set. I like all the abilities. Magecraft is terrifying. Yeah, it seems like a, it seems like an ability that's going to have a, a positive impact. I think that that's what we talked about before. Like. That's an effect that players like to do, right? To count and keep track of, um, to have those triggers. It's a fun way to, it's it's like, an, it's a fun thing for newer players to experience. It also kind of creates the possibilities are endless sort of mentality when you're building because you're like, okay, how many effects of these can I get that scales across so many different things? That's like a really fun way to play magic. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked on Magecraft. I think it's going to be awesome. I think the scariest one is Storm Kiln Artist that I've seen so far. It's three in a red. A dwarf shaman uh storm kill artist gets plus one plus zero for each artifact you control 
and then when and then Magecraft make a treasure token. Yeah, I mean, making a treasure token on Magecraft is like pretty damn good, right? Well, yeah, especially because a he gets bigger, right? Like worst case scenario, you're just like if you storm off but can't kill your opponent, you have a like seven zero that seven two that ramped you a bunch or a twelve two. But then also every one of those tra- like he's a ritual on a card. <laughs> Right, right, right. Like that, that specifically one. And then there's like, there's a few that are just like do damage to your opponent that'll kill them. And then our preview card itself is like a lord to all creatures. I think there's a lot of cool stuff. I'm excited. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I got to say today before we get into the world of, of previews. Anything yeah, else? Next week, we should be back, presumably with our top 10. I think probably because no, no, the I think whole we're two weeks. Two weeks away? Okay, because the whole set won't be spoiled yet. I think, I think uh, end of next week, it's spoiled. It'll be it'll be fully previewed. Uh, I am your host, Alex. Guess this is my co-host, Ben Bateman. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, make sure every Monday night we do a commander stream. I don't know who our guest is this week, but next week we'll be playing with brand new commanders from this set. Each of us brewing a new deck. And then I think the week after that, we have Sheldon, Menery, and Tarmo Cat both joining us. So that'll be a fire one as well. Uh, we have a lot of cool guests lined up moving forward. And if you miss it on the stream, they are on YouTube at all times. So you can just go check the old games out, new games. We have we have some awesome games out there as well. Uh, make sure to check out Ben's uh, music. Yes, the first song is live right now. If you guys are hearing this after the 5th of April, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple Music, it's on Amazon, all the various places you can get music. Um, check it out. I have it also as a lyric video on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash nerds and suits. But I have been working tirelessly for the last year on this project. The album's going to come out this summer. I'll be touring New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Austin, Nashville, Seattle, San Francisco in August. And I'll be going out and booking my own shows. So um, give it give it a chance. Give it a listen, guys. It would mean the world to me. And I am playing a digital show where I'll be playing the whole album plus some covers on the 10th of April uh, on stage. It. So I'll put the link to that stuff in the description of this video but i do appreciate you taking the time to listen and uh, otherwise we'll be back next week with more of magic the gathering content absolutely also we have a new movie show that's coming out every week Check out too. thanks everyone yeah. we'll talk to you next week bye guys this has been a production of time traveler media sending podcasts into the future